Hi everyone! Join me today where we learn to do the multicolored version of the cobblestone stitch. You may recognize this stitch from a previous tutorial where I showed you how to do the single colored version, but today we're going to cover a multicolored version where I used three colors to create this swatch. It's a nice simple stitch where you're only using one color per row. You can find the stitch pattern and the stitch chart in the blog post that accompanies this video on my website. So let's get working on our swatch. So an example of the swatch we have here, and I'm going to show you using very, very subtle colors. We're going to use a pale blue, a white and a pale beige to just give a very subtle look to it. You can use darker colors if you want to. We're going to be using a medium weight yarn and I'm choosing to use the impeccable yarn by Loops and Threads today. I'm going to start with my blue. So the way that we have this swatch is I start with the blue, then the white, then the beige. So blue is A white is B and beige is C. I'm also using a number five hook. So let's get started. So we take the yarn and we loop it around our finger. This is how I make my loop. And then I fold that loop over into a pretzel. I take my hook and take it underneath this arm of the pretzel, pull it through, pulling both ends till it's tight, not too tight, but firm. And then using two fingers, I pull the loop up to the hook. So again, it's, it slips around nicely, but it's on the hook. There's no big gap there. So let's go ahead and chain our 15. So again, I use my tension by wrapping the yarn through my fingers, whatever works best for you. It takes practice to figure what feels good for you. Um, this is just something I've always done and holding the knot with my thumb because this is where I create the tension, I start to chain. So loop the yarn over and start your chains. So I usually get a rhythm to my chains. I want to do 15. Um, I'll either do two or three at a time. Three usually feels best, especially when I'm doing an odd number. So I've got one, two, three, and then I go four, five, six, and then I move my thumb up, seven, eight, nine, and I move my thumb up, 10, 11, 12, I move my thumb up, 13, 14, and 15. And then I do one more to start the next row. So our first row is going to be a single crochet row. Working back into our loops of our foundation chain, we're going to insert the hook in the second chain from the hook, wrap the yarn around, bring it through and bring it through both loops. And that's our single crochet. So go ahead and single crochet into each loop across your foundation chain. And we're going to end up with 15 stitches because this stitch pattern is a multiple of two plus one. And when we get to our last chain, we're going to single crochet into that. Now, how you change your colors is just personal preference as long as you're consistent. So sometimes I'll change my color by finishing the single crochet and starting it in the chain one. And sometimes I'll change the color here as I finish the single crochet. So the next color I want, which will be color B, is the white. So I pick up my color B, which is the white, and I'm going to finish this single crochet with the white. And then I'm going to chain one. So make sure you're working with the right end. So leave that that loose end and take the yarn that comes from the ball because it's easy to get them mixed up at this point. And you're going to put your tension in place around your fingers and create that chain. So you got a lot of loose um, loops going on here. Just kind of try to keep everything not too tight, but still firm enough that you don't have these huge gaping loops. So we've done our chain one and we're going to turn our work and we're going to work across row two. So we're going to be changing our color every row. So the first stitch right here is going to be a single crochet. So go in, wrap the yarn around, pull it through and pull it through both loops. Your first and last stitch will always be a single crochet in this stitch pattern. Your second stitch is going to be a half double crochet. So wrap the yarn around, put your hook through the next stitch under both loops, Wrap the yarn around again and pull it through and you're going to have three loops on your hook. 
Wrap the yarn around and pull it through all three. Use your thumb to help you manage this stitch smoothly. So your next stitch will be a slip stitch. Without wrapping the yarn around this time, just go ahead and put your hook into the next stitch under both loops. You're going to wrap the yarn around, pull it through that stitch and through the loop on your hook. So that's your slip stitch. Those two stitches are what you're going to work all the way across to the last two stitches. So we're going to do a half double crochet and a slip stitch. Continue to work those across to the end of the row so you'll have two stitches left at the end. So when we get to our last two stitches, we want the second last stitch to be a half double crochet. And again, the last stitch, just like the first stitch, is going to be a single crochet, not a slip stitch. So you want to work a single crochet into that last stitch. And this is where we want to change our color. This time we're going to go to color C, which is the beige. So grabbing my beige, I'm going to finish off this single crochet by just looping the yarn around the hook and pulling it through to finish the single crochet. So make it neat and tidy there by pulling your, your color B, just so you're not too gaping. Then we're going to chain one. Make sure you're chaining with the yarn that's coming from the ball, not the end. Chain one and you're going to turn. So at this point, you're going to have a lot of colors working off of your piece. So you've got the blue coming off the left side and you've got the beige and the white coming off the right side. As you work your way up, you're always going to have the color you need lying on the proper side. So you don't have to cut any ends. So that's the nice thing about it. You can carry the yarn as you go up the sides. So our, our third row is going to be working in the beige and we're going to do the single crochet. So let's go ahead and do that. First stitch right here, we're going to work as a single crochet. Second stitch, single crochet and the same all the way across. So this row is an easy one because you're working single crochets. Now, if you were just working with one color, that would be it. The only thing you'd have to be concerned with are those two rows, the single crochet row and the row with a half double crochet slip stitch. But because we're doing three colors, I actually have the chart worked up as a six row repeat because you're going to do the three colors again, but they're going to be working opposite rows. So really by changing the colors, you've turned the stitch pattern into a six, to, uh, six row pattern repeat. So we've reached the end of our single crochet row. And if we just want to take a quick look at the stitch here, we've got a nice smooth row of blue, a nice textured row of white, and a nice smooth row of the beige. So by the time we've done the six rows, we're going to have one of each of the textured rows in a color and one of each in the uh, single crochet smooth rows in a color. So let's go ahead and move back to color A. So once we get these ends out of the way, in fact, that end's going to come to the front. There's your color A hanging right there, ready for you to use. You're going to bring it up in front of the color you just used, but behind the colors from before it. So you're going to leave those lying in front, pick up the blue, and you're picking it up in front of the beige. So you're going to finish this single crochet with the blue, and then just kind of give that beige a little bit of a tug just so that stitch goes back to the same size as the other ones. And then we're going to chain one. Now we're going to turn our work, and we're going to work across the wrong side with our texture row. So although we've already done this pattern stitch, we're doing it with a different color. So it shows up on the stitch chart as another row in our pattern. So the first row, first stitch is going to be a single crochet and our second stitch will be a half double crochet. And then the next stitch, a slip stitch. And we're going to continue across like that. So half double crochet and a slip stitch. Again, I'm working this pattern in very soft and subtle colors. So it gives a very soft um, texture and, and dimension to it. 
but you can also work it in very contrasting colors for a completely different look. So remember when we get to those last two stitches, you want to do a half double crochet and then you want to do a single crochet. And you'll get used to changing these colors every row. It does take practice, but it does come. It can feel a little floppy at times, like you're not getting your loops uh, as even as you want them to be, but it does come with time. So we're going to take our white, which is lying right there, ready for the next row. Pick it up in front of the blue, so the blue stays to the back. And you're going to finish off that single crochet. Again, give the blue a little tug just so it matches the rest of the loops. And then you want to chain one. We're going to turn our work. And now we have a row of blue creating texture as well. So next row is going to be white and it's going to be a single crochet row. So working our way across to the end of this row, we're going to get to the last stitch and we're going to want to change to the beige, which is color C. It's hanging here waiting for us. And you don't have to worry about which color because if you ignore those ends, the blue is over on the right side. So you won't mistakenly pick up the wrong color as long as you understand those ends aren't, aren't in play. So here we are going to switch to our beige and we pick it up from the front. You can pick up from the back as long as you're consistent. Always pick up from the same direction and you're going to end up with a really nice edging. So we pick up our beige and we finish off our single crochet. And again, so if I didn't tug on that white, sometimes you end up with this really loopy loop here because now you're working with a different color. So you just have to give it a nice little adjustment so it fits with the rest of the stitches because when you go to pick it up again, that'll be the last opportunity you have to make that loop a nice even edge. So chain one with the beige, which is color C, turn your work, and we're going to do another textured row. So we go single crochet in our first stitch, half double crochet in our second stitch, and slip stitch in the next stitch. And then again, we repeat the half double crochet slip stitch. If for some reason you've forgotten what row you're on, you can even just look at the texture of the pattern itself. And you know that you're working a texture stitch when you have all this smoothness. And you know you're working a single crochet when you have all this texture in front of you. So again, we're going to go across half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch. And this is technically the last row of the pattern. I always throw in one more row of single crochet because your first single crochet uh, was worked into the foundation chain. So in order for the pattern to be written properly, I always throw in the last single crochet row. So although I'm giving you seven rows of the pattern, only six of them are to be repeated. So we're going to finish off with a single crochet at the end of the row. And again, we pick up the blue. So now we're back where we started. Finish that single crochet with the blue. Give your beige a nice little even tug so that it matches the rest. Chain one with your blue and turn. So these are the six rows of the pattern. We've got a single crochet row of blue, a half double crochet slip of white, a single crochet of beige, a half double crochet slip of blue, a single crochet of white, and a half double crochet slip of beige. So those six rows are going to create your pattern and we're going to repeat those throughout. So see how each of the colors shows up in texture and then it's complemented by a nice smooth row underneath it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my square and then we'll show you how that looks. So here we have our finished square. You can see here how the texture shows up nicely. So it gives you kind of a, a model look of the three colors together. These could be really contrasting colors but I've chosen to go with very subtle colors. So by using one color, you just get the texture, which is very beautiful, but by adding in multiple colors, it gives you an even more 
fantastic look. I've used three here. You could actually use any odd number of colors. So you could do this with five colors. You could even do it with seven colors. Whatever you want to work with, as long as it's an odd number of colors, you'll get this look. And the colors carry up the sides so nicely in this stitch pattern. You don't ever have to cut your colors, so there's not all those ends you have to weave in. And if you're consistent on always picking up your color from the same side, whether it's the front or the back, you'll get this wonderful little braid running up the side of your project. It's one of those stitch patterns that works with almost every weight of yarn and in almost every project. I've used it for baby wear. It works great in blankets, home decor, and for sweaters. So many fun things you can do with this stitch pattern. You can find all the information about it over on my blog post on my website. You can find the link for that in the description below. If you enjoyed the tutorial, remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future ones. Thanks again for joining me and we'll see you next time.